Welcome to the Veterans Healing Farm. My name is Adora Winquist. I'm the director of aromatherapy. It is a beautiful, sunny fall day here in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And I'd like to take you on a brief tour of our medicinal garden. So let's take a look here. You can see uh, most of our plants have already bloomed for the season, except for the beautiful echinacea flowers. We use echinacea to boost the immune system for short durations of time. Here you'll see motherwort, which is uh, historically used as a cardiac tonic. One of my favorites here is moringa, and this is a traditional South American plant, and this is used for energy and as an overall tonic to strengthen all of the systems of the body. Another favorite, especially from a female perspective, is vitex or chaste berry. Um, and this is wonderful for hormonal balancing. I use this plant a lot in uh, my early years um, when I was working with balancing endometriosis in my system. So it's a wonderful plant for bringing balance to uh, the feminine reproductive system. Over here we have horsetail. This is only the second year that we've grown horsetail. We haven't harvested it yet. Uh, but this plant is a wonderful anti-aging herb um, and it's very rich in silica so it's wonderful for hair, skin, and nails. So hopefully we'll be harvesting this plant next year. And then right next to it, you can see there's some commingling here with the horsetail which is quite prolific. We have joagulin and this is an Asian herb uh, relatively new here and it's similar chemically to ginseng. So it's a wonderful tonic, great for energy, stamina, endurance, um, and it has a very strong flavor to it, but I think it's quite delicious as a tea. And then another favorite, uh, geranium, wonderful also for balancing the hormones and as a nervine, so it's very relaxing. Here we have rose. This is a Ragusa rose variety, typically seen more in beach communities. And it might be hard to see, but you can tell there's a few rose hips on the plant and the rose hips are very high in vitamin C and it makes for a wonderful tea through the winter to keep our immune system strong. But what I'm most excited to show you today is beautiful Tulsi. Um, and this Tulsi is incredible because it doesn't really start to bloom until the summer, but you can have many, many, many harvests. I think maybe this is our fifth or even sixth harvest. Uh, we cut it and make tea out of it, and we also use it to create tinctures. But today, we're gonna to do a distillation of Tulsi. So known as a uh, scientific name, holy basil um, or Tulsi is known as Osimum sanctum or Osimum teneflorum. And today we're gonna to be harvesting down to get most of the leaves and the flowers. And that's really where our medicine is. So we're gonna do a harvest of this, and then we'll take you over to the distillation area. Now the beautiful thing about Tulsi is that this herb um, has been used historically in Ayurvedic medicine in India for thousands of years but it's relatively new to us here in the West. Uh, it's a wonderful adaptogen. And so what that means is that it helps our body heal and rebuild from stress, from everything from a physical and metabolic perspective, from an emotional perspective, and then from an external stressor perspective. And we know we have a lot of those these days. The tea is wonderful for the digestive system, um, for clearing brain fog, and helping our body as a whole to become stronger and more balanced, including our energy and our mood. So we'll just take a little bit more today. If you were going to grow, say, five herbs in your garden, I would highly recommend Tulsi as one of the top ones because you can make so much medicine from it and you can make it continuously throughout the growing season. Now, if you do grow it and you'd like to make a tea, it's really best to do your harvest and then let it wilt for a day. And that helps the 
cell membranes where the medicine is in the plant to soften and open up. So your tea or even your tincture, if you're going to be making tincture, is more potent. Great. We'll see you over at the distillation unit. Welcome back to our special distillation video today on Tulsi. I'd like to welcome you to the Compass Rose Garden dedicated to Rose Mashi. It's beautiful if you take a look around at some of the different varieties and gorgeous colors of the roses here, even at this late season of harvest in the fall. A rose is one of my favorite plants to use medicinally. We looked at some rose hips in the garden, and we also make medicine from the rose flower, both from an herbal tea perspective and an essential oil or an absolute. But today we're here working with Tulsi essential oil. Before I show you the distillation process, I'd like to just mention a couple of other forms of Tulsi that we've grown and harvested and processed here at the Veterans Healing Farm this year. And this is our Tulsi tea, um, which we talked about a few minutes ago in the garden during the harvest of this beautiful herb. And we also have a Tulsi tincture. And where we spoke a little bit about some of the benefits as Tulsi is an adaptogen, I'd like to just mention that it's also wonderful for supporting the digestive system. It's wonderful for cognitive and brain function, including memory. And it's great for mood as well strengthening mood and also just overall endurance and as we spoke of before resilience to stress that we experience in so many different forms and facets. I first came across Tulsi on my initial trip to India. I had never seen it before and this was back in about 2000 where it wasn't a very common herb here in the States but there it was used uh, as an offering to the deities in the Hindu temples and then visiting different Ayurveda hospitals in southern India really getting to understand that um, Tulsi from a medicinal perspective has such potency and such reverence in their culture. Now we're beginning to find many scientific studies here in the West that speak to uh, its benefit from a mind and body perspective. So great, so let's go over and talk about uh, Tulsi as an essential oil. So when we refer to uh, aromatherapy, what we're really talking about is the art and science of using plant extracts produced via steam distillation, as we'll talk about here in a moment, from aromatic plants. And from our process today, even though we're only going to be producing just a few drops of the essential oil, we will produce a significant amount of hydrosol. And so let's talk about the two different benefits. So the essential oil is not water soluble. It is the most potent, volatile, chemical aspect of the plant, containing typically over a hundred different chemical constituents that really lend its physiological, emotional, and mental benefits. Now we use essential oils reverently and quite sparingly by the drop, and we dilute them always prior to use on the skin. But that's a whole other subject where we invite you to visit the veteranshealingfarm.org website to our virtual programs for this year where we have wonderful videos and a workbook on an introduction to aromatherapy and an introduction to botanical medicine by my colleague Dr. Lulu Shemek who is the director of plant medicine here at the farm. And so there's a whole wealth of information from history to creating formulas, safety, selection, and many, many, many recipes, including a focus on Tulsi. Tulsi essential oil is typically used by aromatherapists from everything to uh, clearing mental uh, brain fog, um, increasing clarity, wonderful for headaches. I've had great success with it through the years using it for migraines synergistically. Um, again, wonderful for the digestive system, for muscle aches and pains because it has some analgesic effects. It's quite popular for that too. Uh, so it's a wonderful essential oil and 
more often than not, we're using Tulsi from an aromatherapy standpoint for mood, addressing depressive and anxious natures um, because it has such an affinity, not just for the adrenal system, but for overall brain function. Now the hydrosol is water soluble, so it makes it a little bit more gentle. It contains micro drops of the chemical constituents and is used predominantly for skin care um, and, and wonderful as a room spray. So we're going to be um, having the Tulsi Hydrosol today and using it recommendation as an antimicrobial spray in your home, office, or personal space, your car. Wonderful as a hand sanitizer. And also when you're spraying it through the air, it helps to increase feelings of benevolence, um, benevolence in mood uh, and also clarity in thinking. So when we have our Tulsi distillation here, and we're just going to capture every drop of this precious hydrosol and a few drops of essential oil. So in this process, we have water and all of our plant material. Now, different plants um, have the essential oil stored in different aspects of the plant. In this case, in the case of holy basil or tulsi, it's in the leaf or the flower. So we've harvested that and processed it and put it into our distillation vessel where we heated the water to create a, a steam. The steam pulls out the essential oil from the cells within the plant wall, the plant material, and pulls it out as a vapor. And then our condensing unit of cool water takes that vapor and creates two different byproducts of distillation. One, of course, is our essential oil, and the second is our hydrosol. So then, and what we will do here, this is our separator. Now, essential oils, and this is probably maybe a little bit difficult to see right now, but the essential oil will float on top of the hydrosol or floral water, as sometimes it's known specifically for rose or even neroli. In some cases, it will float to the bottom, depending on the molecular weight of the essential oil, as in the case of clove. So here, we will take this and then we will separate the hydrosol from the essential oil. And again, we're just going to get a few drops of the essential oil because of the mass quantity of plant material that it takes to make such a minute drop of the essential oil. In many cases, when you think of lavender, it takes over 150 pounds of lavender flowers to make just one pound of the essential oil, which really um, makes so much sense why it is uh, essential oils are truly the most potent form of plant medicine. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Tulsi steam distillation video. We hope you join us again soon. Thanks and blessings to your best health.